So a legend here in central Otago is the story of the two streams in this area. Quite an interesting legend there. The amount of engineering it would have taken to build this monstrous, huge, enormous hydroelectric dam. So we all know central Otago famous for their wines. The other thing they're famous for is their fruit. We're in Clyde at the moment and this is Natalie's house that she was born in. Hey there, we're Matt and Nat, a couple of awesome newlyweds travelling the South Island of New Zealand for two weeks on our honeymoon adventure in our sixth berth motorhome camper van. We know you're jealous so don't hold it against us. We finally got ourselves a camper van. If this is your first time to our channel, what the hell have you been doing? Hit that subscribe button, mash up that bell and leave us a comment because we actually love to hear from you. In this episode, we explore Central Otago, a region that is famous for its gold mining history, hydroelectric dams, fruit and Natalie's birth home. Stick around because we really cannot afford to lose our audience retention. Cheers. Good morning. Hey you, thanks for stopping by and checking out our adventures. Today we uh, just left Arrowtown and Queenstown area, but we are still in central Otago. We're going to be doing some cool things, visiting Natalie's birthplace. Looks like we're on, just stepped onto the set of some sort of western or something. Natalie has recommended that we go and check out Roaring Meg, which is this massive, uh, is it like a waterfall from a power station? Central Otago legends here is how the two streams in this area actually got named. An early party of diggers were traveling through the area. They had two women with them. And when they got to the first stream, they decided to carry the women across. The first one was loud, obnoxious, noisy, a real pain in the butt. So they decided to name that first stream Roaring Meg. The second lady, she was very demure, very quiet, very small and fragile and gentle. So they named the second stream after her, Gentle Annie. Behind us, this is Roaring Meg. Quite an interesting legend there, and I'm sure that Natalie has many more to share with us. This is her home region after all. Catch you there. So we all know Central Otago are famous for their wines, but the other thing they're famous for is their fruit. So we've just stopped off at Webb's Fruit Gorge Store. Still going. <laughs> Have a little bag of plums. Oh, Omega plums are the best. Get a bag of them. Yeah. And we've got some peaches, some peacherines, some Omega plums, and some nectarines. And I'm just so excited. Oh, so juicy. Mm. So Clyde is sort of built in a, um, almost like a valley, um, and the dam is above it. Uh, in Clyde, we're at the Clyde Dam. Clyde Dam was built uh, between 1979 and 1992. Actually produces about 10% of all of New Zealand's power, which is phenomenal for such a small little town as well. In a total year, this amazing dam can actually generate 1.93 gigawatts of power. <laughs> do that. Just welcome to the reason why we left Clyde. It's welcome to the reason why. The, the amount of engineering it would have taken to build this monstrous, huge, enormous hydroelectric dam is outstanding. Just the, the manpower it would have taken and they've actually built into the, into the side of the hills tunnels that they used to drain all the excess water out as well. So that's kind of cool. What I find quite scary maybe, I'm not sure, uh, is that there's actually kayaks over at the hydro station. What? There's, really? There's kayaks over there. Who's got a kayak in that water? Piss off. <laughs> After being shocked at the size of the dam, pun intended, we made a quick detour into the town of Clyde, Natalie's birth home. Clyde is a small, sleepy town that is famous for having a four square. This is where this person's going to be like, why is that person's... That's my old house. <laughs> oh my god. We're in Clyde at the moment, and this is Natalie's house that she was born in. Yeah, well, not, no, not born in. This is where I lived. This was your first home. Then. First proper house. After the shop, we moved here to Clyde, and this was our house. I was, was saying that where that tree, the, that palm is there, that tree, the cabbage tree, that was where Dad built a fish pond. <laughs> Just brings back memories. Does the house still look the same? No, completely different. It used to be white. Okay, was it always brick and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. So it always had that porch up there and. Yep. Wow, bringing back memories for you? A little bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I 
after possibly scaring the occupants of my former home, we thought it was time to hit the road before we ended up on an episode of Police 107, making the long drive through the iconic Central Otago landscape to the very bottom of the South Island. <laughs> we finally made it to Bluff. Yeah. And we have something very excited for you guys tomorrow. And I know I don't, I don't, I, I don't <laughs> sound excited. I sound nervous and scared because I am and you'll, you'll see it tomorrow. But today's drive, it took a while to get here. And well, we stopped. It's because we, we stopped we, at my stopped, home place yeah, and my birthplace. Yeah, and we stopped at Natalie's birthplace and everything like that. And, um, I don't know what else to say other than um, we're at the bottom of the South Island. We are bitches. at the bottom of the South Island, bitches. <laughs> and <laughs> I know what to say. If you thought this video was tight, leave it a like. Uh, this ain't no bribe. Please <laughs> yeah. subscribe. And hey, what the hell? Ding that bell. And we'll catch you again tomorrow. Bye. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the bottom, bottom of the South, South Island. Island. Why am I doing this? This is what Bluff looks like at 10 to 7 in the morning. Woohoo! We just ticked off something off of our bucket list. Captain Mike told just told us then we thought we only saw three sharks. We actually saw five. Yeah.